All right, what's going on guys? So today we're gonna go over three basic compound upper body exercises to increase strength. Let's get into it. All right guys, so before we get into it, I wanted to make sure that you understood that I am doing an online gym now available, link is down below. If you want to train all of my programs and get with a coach to keep you accountable, check out the online Daru Strong Gym, now available, link is down below. Now let's get into the three exercises. So the first exercise that I'm gonna go over for upper body strength is gonna be the bench press. Now, this is without saying, but a lot of people do the bench press wrong, right? And for when we're trying to increase maximal force, and we're just trying to get true strength out of the particular exercise, we wanna put our body in the best position to produce that force as maximal as possible. So we're gonna take a powerlifting approach to this particular exercise. So before we get started, I wanted to make sure if you stay tuned to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you three bonus special exercises to increase strength. All right, so now let's get into the bench press. When I go to set up for the bench, you're gonna make sure that your heels are in line with your hips, all right? So that's gonna allow me to tuck my hips under, squeeze my glutes and activate my legs pretty much to give me optimal leg drive to increase the bench press, all right? So again, like I said, this isn't bench pressing for the sake of hypertrophy, this is bench pressing for the sake of moving maximal load, all right? So what I'm gonna do is, again, set my feet up. Now your heels don't have to touch the ground, but you want them in line with the hips, like I said. So as you come down, you're gonna put them right there, right below your hips, and you're gonna squeeze your glutes. So I'm gonna drive my legs into the bench, and I'm squeezing my glutes here. From there, I'm gonna take a basic shoulder width grip or whatever grip that you feel comfortable with, and I'm gonna pull my shoulder blades down as far as I can, and I'm just gonna retract, okay? Now, the point of this is to obviously stabilize your, your shoulders and keep your back locked in. You don't need to get a big, big arch like this like you see a lot of the power lifters do, but it is important for you to have those shoulder blades locked in, okay? Now, what this also is gonna do is gonna give you less bar range. So now I have that less range of motion I have to fight through, but it's also gonna give you leverage. So now I can drive through with my shoulders, my triceps, and my chest. So I'm gonna take a tight grip and squeeze the bar as tight as I can. I don't like the suicide grip just for safety purposes. I like to have my thumbs around the bar, all right? From there, again, I'm pulling my shoulder blades back and down as much as I can. Pull the bar up and over, locking my lats in, right? From there, I'm gonna make sure my knuckles are facing the ceiling, squeezing on the, on the bench here with my, with my thighs and my glutes are on as I come down. I'm gonna touch my chest and drive straight up. Now, one thing uh, you wanna be mindful of, because you are trying to maximize every muscle for your pressing power, you definitely wanna use your back too as well. So as I'm coming down, I'm actually pulling the bar in, activating the lats, the rhomboids, rear delts, my entire upper back too as well. And then from there, I'm gonna drive. I'm gonna act like I'm spreading the bar apart. So I'm driving my hands apart. That's gonna activate my triceps to help me lock out the position. So what this is gonna do is again, with pressing power, pressing strength, depending on your sets and reps, anything under five repetitions are going to help you maximize strength qualities. So we wanna make sure that we have those set rep ranges that are according to what strength adaptations are going to occur. And then from there, you can base your sets, your whole overall volume on that too as well, on the percentage of load. All right guys, so the next exercise, we went to a press. Now we're gonna go into a pull variation or a row variation. Now this is one of the major compound movements I like to do for upper body. This is a bent over row. Now, there's several ways that you can do the bent over row, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the conventional style that everybody usually goes to, right? Which is going to be a pronated grip, right? And you're just gonna be bent over here where your chest is parallel to the floor. Now I'm gonna take a shoulder width grip and what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow me to stack and stabilize my posterior chain. So as I come down, I need to keep my lats engaged, my hamstrings on, 
my hips engaged, and then from there, I'm gonna roll up into my sternum. So as my, as the elbows come up, they're gonna go into that angle, that 45 degree angle. So I'm not pulling high like this, and I'm not pulling super close. What this is gonna do is this is gonna hit a little bit more of that upper to mid back, but you also are gonna hit a little bit of lat too as well. The goal here is, is again, maximal size, right? And strength. So we can do as much weight as we need to, obviously with good form and less body language, right? We don't wanna do too much yanking and pulling. The torso needs to be in line with the floor as much as possible. So you don't wanna jerk the weight up. All right, here we go. Lats are engaged. I'm gonna roll down from here, pull. Very basic, simple movement to do, but definitely a key exercise when you're trying to build strength in the posterior chain and in your rowing or pulling movements. Okay, so the last basic compound movement that we're gonna do to build strength for your upper body is going to be an overhead press. Now there's several variations of the overhead press, but today we're just gonna go over the standing overhead press. And what you wanna do is you wanna set a rack up to where it's easily able to get off the rack and put back on so that you're not causing any injury to your shoulder or to your back. Another thing is that you wanna maintain a solid brace of your spine. So you don't wanna be super extended here in your low back. That's gonna cause some issues down the line, all right? And if you lack shoulder mobility to get into full shoulder flexion, I wouldn't recommend this exercise. You can do something like a landmine press or even an incline press. I'm gonna take a shoulder width grip, same concept. As I get underneath the bar, I'm gonna drive my elbows underneath. So I'm gonna drive my elbows underneath, squeeze my glutes, just like I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a weight for a squat. And I'm gonna lock my rib cage down. So, big breath in. Step, step, from here, I'm gonna drive up, lock my elbows, squeeze the glutes, come back down, and then back up. Step back. Put it down. The main thing also, like I said, is it's gonna be elbow placement. It's gonna be how your thorax sits in line or in line with your pelvis. So you wanna make sure you're stacking your rib cage. And also keep your glutes engaged. Again, like everything, you wanna maintain that solid brace there. Your hips and your glutes are gonna help you stabilize the spine in a way. So that plus your breathing and bracing will definitely help to maintain a healthy back. All right, your obliques are gonna play a role along with your transverse abdominals and your rectus abdominals too. As you get the weight off, make sure that your lats are engaged. All right, that's gonna help stabilize the spine as well. So there's little things there that you can do to keep your body safe while you're pressing overhead. You wanna keep a strong grip on the bar. The stronger your grip is, the more force you're gonna have throughout the entire body. So gripping the bar is the first line of defense, gripping it as tight as possible. Once you get underneath, lock your lats in, squeeze your glutes, keep your abs engaged, and then get it off the rack, okay? As you go to press, make sure that you're at a comfortable weight to where you can get it all the way overhead if you have the proper mobility like I talked about. And as you come down, don't let it come crashing down, okay? A good rule of thumb is if I pull my arms down, this is primarily where you wanna go. So as I'm doing almost like a, uh, a pull up or a, a, a pull down, you wanna go to where your body allows your, your hands to go, right? And that's gonna be your end range to where you can press from, all right? Anything other than that, you put a lot of stress on the shoulders and then you're probably gonna go into more extension of the back, all right? So here you go. Again, keep the rep ranges lower, five, threes, singles, things like that, and make sure the sets equate over to what you're doing from a volume standpoint based upon the percentages. You wanna look around 85 to 100% if you're gonna do something to increase your strength.
Okay, here we go. You stayed for the longer duration of the video, so I'm gonna give you three bonus exercises. The first one we're gonna do is a floor press, all right? So this is a different variation that you can do to bring up your bench press. So if this was a supplemental exercise or something of, a, of what we call a builder lift, this is definitely gonna help increase the strength of your bench press if you're a power lifter or you just wanna increase your bench press. You can utilize this if you're getting stuck at lockout or mid range to lockout. All right, so basically what you're gonna do and get on the floor, all right? And you're gonna lay down flat. I like to keep my legs flat just so I don't use any leg drive, all right? And also, if you do have problems or you have an anterior pelvic tilt where you are arched, super arched, you wanna keep your back flat. So in that case, I would tell you to bring your feet up, but you just wanna make sure that you're not pushing through the floor because you are gonna push your butt off the floor. So we don't want that, all right? But if you can maintain a flat back, then I highly recommend you just keep your legs flat. Now, you can squeeze your glutes and you can push down your heels so that your body is tight, right? So you wanna stay stable, you wanna be in control of the bar. Same rules apply just like the bench press. We're gonna grab the bar, you're gonna come down. Now with this floor press, it's not putting any added stress on the stretch part of the, of the press. So as I'm coming down, I'm getting to where the floor meets and your elbow is in line with the bar so as the elbow hits the hits the ground you're not bouncing it off the ground you're gonna let it meet the ground and then drive it back up so it's a it's a slight pause at the bottom right you're not slamming the bar down or slamming your elbows down on the floor that will hurt you want to let it sit for a second and then drive it through really good like i said for lockout or mid-range of the bench press if you're getting stuck there squeeze the glutes grab the bar tight off the rack same thing, you wanna lock your shoulders in. And then as I come down, elbows touch, drive. Elbows touch, drive. One thing again you wanna be mindful of is don't let the wrist get here into extension, okay? You wanna make sure you're locked in, everything is stacked. So we're gonna do what's called bone stacking, right? The wrist and the elbow and the shoulder are aligned as they come down, drive up, boom. Good for anterior delt work, also good for the triceps, good at special exercise or supplemental exercise, or you can use this as your major compound lift like we do with our fighters. Um, puts less stress on the shoulders, gives us a somewhat of a specialized way of doing a press, right? So if you're getting off a of guard or getting out of a position, you're gonna need to be on the floor and be able to drive through with just this, this uh, range of motion. So it's really good there. If you have a different bar, you can use a football or a Swiss bar to put your hands in different positions which will be really good too for variation, especially if you're a combat sport athlete. All right, so there it goes. Again, same sets and reps apply. I'm not sitting on a dead horse. I'm actually sitting on a seal row bench press. All right, but what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna be a variation that you can utilize for a row pattern. So we did the bent over row. Now, if you wanna give your back a break, um, you don't need to stabilize. Let's say you just did some RDLs or some deadlifts or something like that, and you wanna go into a pull movement. This is something that you can utilize for that without having to maintain a static position on your low back because you probably just worked it with the, uh, with the hinge movements. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down here on this seal row, buy Ghost Strong Equipment, hook me up. This is one of the best seal rows that I've ever had. So I highly recommend it. If you don't have access to a seal row, you can get a bench and just prop boxes up to where you have full range of motion. So what we're gonna do is just gonna set up right here, directly in line and the same rules apply. So I'm gonna get a prone hand position, right? And then I'm gonna roll and as I roll, I'm gonna just pull my elbows at that 45 degree angle, the elbows are gonna be set up. So I should look like an arrow if I'm looking down at myself. I'm gonna drive my elbows back I'm not gonna drive them inside like this, and I'm not gonna flare them out like this, okay? So just gonna get that 45 degree angle, keeping a shoulder width position on the hand. And as I go to row up, I am gonna get a slight extension of the upper back. All right, 
So when it comes down to technique, very simple here. The bench helps you out a lot, but as I go to row, right, I want to get a slight extension of the thoracic. So I'm coming up, I'm squeezing, and then I'm bringing it back down. Full range of motion, um, especially if you have the coordination to do so. You want to go ahead and try to protract and then retract and then pull, okay? Let the scap just glide through naturally. And again, you also want to make sure that the elbows are in the right alignment. So we're not pulling up here, we're not pulling in close keeping those elbows right in line, just like a bench press, but the opposite side of that. Really good. We like to utilize this for even strength testing and strength endurance testing. So those are those will be for the combat sport athletes primarily, especially grapplers and wrestlers, um, but it can be done with any athlete. So the last exercise for an overhead press is gonna be the Z press. Now, I've done videos on this in the past, but I'm just gonna go ahead and reiterate the fact that this is really good for grapplers, for jujitsu practitioners. You're stabilizing your torso, right? Because when you press that ball overhead, you're gonna wanna fall back. So you have to keep leaning forward using your psoas, using your rectus, using all your hip flexor muscles, your quads, everything is engaged here in the anterior chain. Now I'm also pressing up overhead. Now this is gonna highly depend upon if you do have that range of motion in the shoulder. So if you don't have that range of motion, it's gonna be disadvantageous for you. It's gonna put you in a bad position and you're probably gonna compensate to try to get the weight up, which is gonna cause further injury. So we don't wanna do that. All right, so main thing, like I said, you have to have the proper joint prerequisites to do this particular movement. Once you do, it is a great movement to do. It's a great exercise. So what we're gonna do is same concept. I'm gonna go ahead, grab the bar, right? And then lift, keep it at that same arm position like we did with the overhead press. From there, abs are on. I'm gonna press up over my head. Boom, hold it right there, lock in, back down, back up. <sighs> 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 So, great exercise to supplement for an overhead press, um, especially if you don't want to work your legs or be on your feet um, doing this particular motion. It eliminates that compensation with your leg drive because a lot of guys will end up dipping and driving through. And if it's a strict overhead press, that's not what we want to do. So, if you want to utilize the shoulders and the triceps stabilizing your body with your trunk, all the core muscles there too as well. Again, sets and reps apply, same concept, 85% to 100% if you are looking to increase your strength, all right? So if you wanna have any more questions on that, go ahead and hit the comments down below. If you wanna train some of these particular movements, some of these exercises, check out the online gym that's available now. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, just double subscribe, just unsubscribe and then subscribe again. Maybe that'll help the algorithms and I'll see you again next time, peace.